What was that moment like when you kind of realized that? Um, that you had reached the pinnacle, there was nowhere else to go. Hello and welcome to Beta House Live, the podcast for Beta House Studio. I am so happy that we are starting a new chapter this week after our focus and flexibility Today we get to go into a whole new thing and I've got Lisa Rimmelard here with me to, Hi. to tell her story. I'm excited. Yeah. So in the focus and flexibility, we talked a lot about how you've got to choose when to hold your guns and stay where you are and when it's time to change. And in a lot of that, I brought up how most changes in life are more like lane changes rather than hard turns. Mm -hmm. But there comes a point where you have to know when to make the hard turn. Yes. And we've had a hard turn, you know, starting our business, moving here. But Lisa's got a great story about her hard turn. And so I wanted her to come in and get to share that with us. And just, it's a great story. They've started a new business. Yes. She and a partner. And I'll let her give that a little bit more later. So there's your teaser. Yes. So go ahead. Well, what did you used to do? Well, Let's first of all, thank you for having me. Oh, and no you know, I love you guys. And <laughs> what you guys are doing here is awesome. So for 15 years, I anchored the news mm -hmm. all across the country. I um, knew when I was four years old that I wanted to be a reporter on, on television. I told my mom when I was four, I want to be a reporter on TV. And I spent my entire childhood, young adult life making that mm -hmm. happen for myself. Um, my very first job was in Tallahassee, Florida. I li grew up in LA, so like <laughs> the, that was a hard, let's talk about a hard turn. So I grew up in LA. My very first job was in Tallahassee, Florida, which uh -huh. is a really teeny little market. Um, and within a year and a half or so, I got picked up by an agent and I moved from that small market. I made a kind of unprecedented jump mm -hmm. to market 12. Okay. So from a hard market 110 to mm -hmm. market 12. Okay. So just for those not in news, real quick. Yes. So what what is the scale for okay, markets? So this is how I explain it to people. Every mm -hmm. single city in the country is ranked based on a number and population size. So New York's number one. Mm -hmm. L.A. is number two. Chicago is number three. And then it goes down the road. So mm -hmm. I started in market 110. So that how tells you. How does it go? I think it's in the 200. Okay, I'm just point. curious. I don't even know. Yeah. Yeah. So market 110 <laughs> is still very yeah. small, very small. Um, and so then I, I made that jump to market 12 mm -hmm. and kind of really expanded my career at that point, um, and then went from there to Vegas, which then I became an anchor, a main anchor, uh -huh. and then came from there to San Diego. So there was a long journey there, and it was mm -hmm. something that I had always wanted to do. Um, but I think what people don't understand about the news business, and and it's very different from the way it was when I first started. Mm -hmm. um, talk about another hard turn. Yeah. Uh, the way that news is gathered and distributed now is completely different than the way it was when I started. But um, I, w when I started and made all of those transitions into every single market, I really, um, it always took something from mm -hmm. me news people don't understand it's like they think oh you're on television like it's fantastic <laughs> and like what people don't see is um the other side mm -hmm. of it which is the grind out side the hard side the go to bed at six o'clock at night wake up at one in the morning mm -hmm. side you know when i was in tampa i was a reporter mm -hmm. a field reporter so i would go to every murder scene. I would go to every car accident. Yeah. And and this was at like, you know, two in the morning mm -hmm. by myself with my photographer. And thank goodness I had lots of great people mm -hmm. around me at the time. Um, but there's a downside to it. Then when you become an anchor, there's another downside to it, which is, um, I always say, anchoring the news is like, you take in the world's problems, mm -hmm. everything that's happening in the world, you ingest it in a raw form, mm -hmm. unfiltered and raw, and then you have to process it and regurgitate it clear and concise mm -hmm. in like 30 seconds. But all of that raw lives with you yep. and it stays with you. So you have that on a daily basis and then you have you know, the interaction with other people that are going through the worst day of their life, that you have to sit there and because you're a human being, mm -hmm. you kind of empathize with them and you, you know, have to talk them through. You become a, yeah. a therapist, you know, too. So you ingest all of that. And then on top of it, you're, 
you know, waking up at that horrible hour and it's doing stuff to your body. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, you're sacrificing your family, you're sacrificing your life, you're sacrificing your time, you miss every single holiday, you work Christmas, East, I mean, any holiday you're working, there's yep. no off days. So, and of course, you sign up for it. Mm -hmm. You sign up for it because you love it, you love the craft, you love journalism, and that's why I continued to do it for so many years. So, so how many years total were you in beginning to end? Uh, I was in, I, I always say like a prison sentence, I was in, yeah. no. <laughs> I, was in <laughs> I was in for 15 years okay. straight. Um, and I, I don't think I'll ever be completely out. Right. But I'm out of the local news grind right. um, for now. The mm -hmm. local news grind, it's something that um, is really difficult to maintain. Mm -hmm. Unless you have no family at all, mm -hmm. and then it's fine and you can maintain that lifestyle. But it's, it's really difficult to maintain it for a long mm -hmm. period of time. So. so you were in for 15 years. In for 15 so years. Now, most of that journey, it seems like it was just a natural stepping stone, natural progression. You know, yeah. it wasn't like you were leaving news, you were doing something different. It was just the right. next step. Right, that's how it works. Right. So in the news business, that's how it works. You, mm -hmm. you kind of move your way up um, based on what your end goal is. Mm -hmm. So my end goal was always to come home. My family, like I said, was yeah. in LA. And so San Diego was kind of the closest yeah. to, because everybody moved to Orange County. So San Diego was really the closest to that. And mm -hmm. so me coming to San Diego and getting this main anchor job in San Diego um, was like my dream realized, uh, Yeah. right? But I was 36 years old. And so what happens when you're 36 years old and you're mm -hmm. like, um, my entire career goal I made, yeah. you know, I had been offered, by that time I had been offered, you know, Fox News and, and CNN and mm -hmm. everybody, like main correspondents for these big networks. Yeah. And I always turned them down because I wanted to come home. I knew that uh -huh. was my end goal. But at 36, then I made my end goal. And you're <laughs> like, well, I'm pretty sure I can't retire at 36, even though I'd love to. So now what's next? Yeah. And so what was that moment like when you kind of realized that? Um, that you had reached the pinnacle, there was nowhere else to go. Yeah, talk about a hard turn, yeah. right? So like you've grown up, lots of us in news have either grown up with it or, you know, by our 20s we're in and you become like indoctrinated into news. Like mm -hmm. it's it's a club, it's a, it's a group, it's something that you cannot separate yourself from. There's kind of an inherent competitiveness in news where you feel like if you're not in and you're out, you're an outsider. Mm -hmm. So you always want to be in. Right. And you always want to be in the action. Like that's what we do. And so to go against my grain that I've been doing since I was four years old mm -hmm. was a really tough decision. But I knew that I was at the end of my contract here in San Diego. And I knew that I couldn't keep waking up at 1.30 in the morning. I knew that it was taking a severe toll on my health. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I had, um, and I fully believe it was from the job. Mm -hmm. I had thyroid cancer, which yeah. I had, um, my entire thyroid removed. Mm -hmm. I went to a full surgery and then I was back at work in two weeks Oof. Yeah, because of the inherent grind that you have in you to be mm -hmm. in news. Like I should have taken two months off, but I yeah. didn't because of the will and desire to be there. So health-wise, family-wise, time-wise, personally, mm -hmm. it came to the point where I was like, I just can't do it anymore. But it was still hard to make the choice. Mm -hmm. And I think for a lot of people, not just in news, but in life, mm -hmm. it's hard to make a, that choice, especially if you've worked so hard and sacrificed so hard for something. Mm -hmm. And then to give it up yeah. is hard. And, you know, I, I made the decision. They wanted me to stay. And, you know, it was, one of, it was a tug of war in in my head mm -hmm. and then I ultimately decided I, I wanted to just see what life would be like on the outside speaking of <laughs> getting out <laughs> getting out getting out of the cell you know <laughs> like I wanted to see what life would be like and so I did it and I made the hard turn and I oh I struggled with it for a I struggled mm -hmm. with it for a very long time right because you know when the, the latest you know, political scandal hits or yeah. the newest whatever <laughs> hits, you're like, I need to be in this newsroom right now. Mm -hmm. Like, I need to be there. Yeah. 
Um, and then to be without it is a, is a very outside. Now I understand the outsider mentality mm -hmm. from inside the news. So, um, so yeah, that's why I made the turn and it was yeah. not easy. And so and let's go into now to what that turn was. Okay. Because I'm going to give a little non-spoiler preview here. Tell me. In that you made a turn but you didn't get out of the car you were in. Correct. Okay. If that if that's yeah. a way to explain it that's exactly. using our car mentality of changing lanes yes. and turning. So Yes. So well, explain what that is now. Okay. So now um, I was so thankful to meet my business partner, mm -hmm. Nichelle Medina, who I knew through the news. Mm -hmm. She was we were actually direct competitors <laughs> in the morning. So her show and my show were on the air at the exact same time. But we became very good friends yeah. because we could understand each other. And mm -hmm. she had the same issues I had. And we were nearing the same point in our career where we had achieved the goal and achieved the dream. Mm -hmm. And now it was time to do something else. Mm -hmm. So I met her and we talked about it. And we talked about it, talking about staying in the car. Mm -hmm. We always say in news, like, just do what you know. Right. And if you don't know it, find somebody that knows it and then let the, that person help you or hire that person. Yes, right? totally. So, <laughs> so what we know is video, storytelling, writing. Mm -hmm. That's what we know. We know how to sell something in 30 seconds. We actually know how to sell something in five seconds. Yeah. So that's what we knew. And we knew that we had both achieve the highest levels in the business mm -hmm. that we are currently in. So why not utilize the name recognition mm -hmm. and utilize the skill set and create what is today Blonde Raven Strategies? Mm -hmm. um, so it's a company that helps your business tell your story um, in an interesting way, clear and concise. Mm -hmm. We get you through it if you need to shoot a video about your, vi uh, your business on a phone. Or if you want a full production, we can help you with that yeah. too. So that's the spoiler. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So not It's a great idea. It really is. Well, I think that, you know, nowadays everybody has a phone. Mm -hmm. And I always say, just because you have a phone doesn't mean you know how to use it right. <laughs> right? Yeah. So speaking of the car, or mm -hmm. also if if you prefer, just because you can drive a car doesn't make you a NASCAR driver. Oh yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So if you're going to want to put your business mm -hmm. in the Indy 500, you need to have a coach to help you, coach you to drive yeah. the Indy 500. And that's the internet these days, the Indy 500. It's mm -hmm. a super highway of crazy town <laughs> where like a million people are on and how do you win that race? Oh yeah. You win that race with people who understand how to do it. Mm -hmm. So that's why I love what you guys do here mm -hmm. at Beta House um, and what we do, we know how to sell something mm -hmm. immediately, quickly, right now. And we like to trans yeah. translate that to business owners. Well, yeah, because a lot of people, they're not, they're, as you said, be an expert in what you know. Mm -hmm. Their expertise is what they are doing. They're either a great real estate agent, they're a great hairdresser, they're a great accountant, you mm -hmm. know, go through a couple of Absolutely. They're not going to be like ultra knowledgeable in how to run a soundboard. Right. Or even naturally... Okay, I'm pointing a camera at my phone at my face. Right. I need to know to look at the camera up above it, not, not at my face talking right. to me. Absolutely. Those little things. Just little yeah. things. And I and, and I don't see a problem with asking for help. No. Right? Like it's <laughs> that's actually the smartest the smartest thing you can do. Yeah. The smartest thing you can do as a business owner is ask for the help in an area where you're not familiar, especially Mm -hmm. when it comes to online videos. Well, and being smart with your time, mm -hmm. you know, being ruthless with your time. There are so many how-to videos out there. I know. And you could spend 10 hours researching on that. You'll get 10 hours of different, different. opinions yep. that suddenly have you more confused than when you started. Absolutely. And so now I, instead of creating a video, I now have another barrier to creating my video because right. now I have all of these decisions I feel like I have to make before I right. even hit record. And so rather than going through that and wasting all of that time, you know, right. one hour at your, you know, Workshop. your 101 yeah. workshops, uh, or not one hour, it's a day. but It's a full day, but still. But still it's like using your time wisely. wisely. Well, and I also think, you know, why not 
So Nichelle, my partner, and I mm -hmm. both – Nichelle spent 24 years <laughs> on the news, yeah. right? And I was 15 years in, and I'm still sort of in. Mm -hmm. So why not – utilize the skill set from the yeah. experts so look you know this there's mm -hmm. a lot of people out there that masquerade as experts but they don't oh. have but they don't have the actual expertise oh, yeah. they might have the on the street training mm -hmm. or you know daily grind yeah. type stuff but Nichelle and I this is our training mm -hmm. we I have a master's degree in it like I spent 15 years on television every yeah. single day um, and so why not utilize an actual expert? Yeah. That's what, and that's what we, we, because whenever in journalism, you need an answer to a question. I don't go to just anybody on the internet. I, I research and find out who the best is and that's where I go. Right. So I would hope that business owners would do the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that makes so much sense. Yeah. And, uh, part of building your team. With uh, the, oh yeah you know don't become the expert where you shouldn't be the expert yeah let no. let people help yeah. you why not and and what we like to we would like to pride ourselves on at blonde raven is you know we give you the tools mm -hmm. because quite frankly you can't afford us all the time <laughs> with, nobody can right. though right because here's the thing is that every um, everybody needs to be pumping out content. You know this. Yeah. Pumping out content all the time. It's a constant beast that needs to be fed. Mm -hmm. And you don't have nobody, unless you're multi, multi millionaire, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody has the financial means right. to hire professionals every time. So mm -hmm. that's what we do. We train you to do it yourself. Mm -hmm. And when it comes time, and we teach you when it's appropriate to hire. A yeah. crew versus when you can do it yourself mm -hmm. and that's yeah. all based on our years and years in television and we're totally in a diy world now absolutely you know like it's so much easier yeah. than it used to be right so when i got into television none of this was possible right you showed me the picture yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah right, right. where it's like what used to be a full room setup is a box. in a box now <laughs> i mean look at when when i started in tv none of this was possible when i started in television mm -hmm. Um, I was a one-man band in yeah. Tallahassee, Florida, <laughs> meaning I had to do everything myself. I found the story. I wrote the story. I shot the story. I edited the story. I interviewed the subject. Mm -hmm. And then I presented it on, on air. <laughs> so I walked around back in the day with a 50-pound camera oh, gosh, that yeah. was three-quarter inch tape. <laughs> the tape was like, it was like a video cassette tape that was this big. Yeah. Three-quarter inch tape. And then I had a tripod that was also 50 pounds. Oh, gosh. So I'm yeah. carrying this around downtown Tallahassee, capital of Florida, like interviewing the governor <laughs> like a crazy person with 100 pounds worth of stuff myself. Mm -hmm. um, so what happens now and what's available now mm -hmm. is an incredible tool as long as you know how to use it right. right. You know, buying all this stuff and spending all this money, but then not having the training to use it right is just a, a disservice. Well, and there's because it has been so democratized for being able to do video creation, you need to be able to stand out. Yeah. And quality stands out. It's Always. not, you know, yeah, a Chewbacca mom video is gonna go viral for one video. Right. But have, does anybody still follow her? I, mean, I, you I don't even know, Yeah, but yeah. I do remember the video. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's the difference between just one viral video versus be able to create evergreen content mm -hmm. that will stand out and be there. Right, well, and you want that content to represent your brand yeah. and represent your business. So if you are if you have a brick and mortar place, mm -hmm. you know, you don't want that place to be messy. You would never stand for the floor to be dirty no. or crap to be on the countertop. You would never stand for that. Mm -hmm. So why would you want your content that is out there with your face on it or oh. even your business yeah. to look that way? It doesn't, it doesn't make sense mm -hmm. to me when there's so many things available. Uh -huh. And I'm not just saying us even though we're the best. But <laughs> as I, but but there is so much available mm -hmm. to to arm yourself with. You have to just make sure you're going to the mm -hmm. right source. So uh, as we're drawing to our end now, yes. I've got to be respectful of your time. Yes. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do our selfie. Oh, yes. Real OK. Quick. I'll get that up real quick. Let me here. just let me just fluff, zhuzh the like, hair, fluff, fluff the hair, yeah. zhuzh the hair. <laughs> yes. You know, Elizabeth, I do not allow bad pictures of me to be forced on the well, internet. Well, you'll get to see I it. I just here want to know. I take it. So. Let me tell you something. I've successfully taken down every bad picture of me <laughs> from Tallahassee because <laughs> it used to be really bad. Oh, crap. My camera's on the wrong side. There, there we go. you are. Is that getting close? 
Look good. Now I've got to get my right hand here. One, two, three. Yay, got there it. Go. Yay. Okay, we'll quit that up here in a minute. Ben's not in here. Normally he starts doing the tags while I talk. So it'll be a few moments. <laughs> Where is Ben? We he's need help. He's door working hard. Okay. So he's, he's being good. Okay. Uh, but that'll be up here in a minute. So if you're following us on Instagram, we are at Beta House Studio. Yay. You will know that we were in recording today and I will have all of your beautiful links down there. Yes. Now, because of what time this is going to go live, it's going to actually be after your next event okay so if you do you have the may date yet um i think we're gonna do another event may 19 okay it's a sunday here in in carlsbad okay california um and it is a great event it's gonna be um a whole year of, you're gonna learn a whole year of content yeah in like one day Woohoo! yeah so we're gonna help you <laughs> yeah tailored to your business deal with um one uh, a whole year of content and i'll have the links yeah, to that great. down Thank in the you. description and everything so that if you're curious about that you can go follow that there and yeah. just click and find them yeah we're really we we tr we make it very easy to find <laughs> us so we're like everywhere we're everywhere i mean besides our own personal accounts we yeah. have blonde raven strategies all over you know instagram facebook linkedin like everywhere mm -hmm. yeah so that is it for today. I have Thank you for having me. You. Love you so much. And Thank I'm you sure for this. you've enjoyed watching this too. So make sure that you like, share, and subscribe down there Please as well. Do. If you're a podcast listener, make sure to give us a great review and rating down there as well. And we will see you in the next video or podcast. <laughs>